close to both sides of the same thing, so it'll be good. I hope this over. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you that I'll make this stuff stretch you out. Yeah, you can. No, she be, but she should be worried about it. Try to be up there. Mm-hmm. But then she get mad at me. That's evil for you to say. That's what she's talking about. I reach out to you. You don't show up. I said, mm-hmm. she thought she saw it. That's what she thought it's all good. I said, she saw it. I mean, I feel like I'm getting on. I tell her that they, they don't come. That they cry. I said, I feel like they don't come. It's like they don't come. They don't come. They don't come. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of stuff might be to put on myself. Yeah. Yeah, we do that. All of us take stuff on ourselves. We don't have to. Well, again, we say good morning. Praise the Lord. We are indeed grateful uh, to the Lord Jesus for blessing us uh, with the strength of our bodies, the presence of our minds, to assemble once again in the house of prayer. And we've come to exhort him and who he is. For the word of God declares that all power belongs to him. And we do know that we cannot come except we come through Jesus Christ. And then we can receive salvation by the work that he has done. His death, his burial, and the very resurrection with all power in his hands. We're grateful that we have this privilege to share with you out of the word of God. And we're certainly appreciative to you that allow us to come into your homes again this Sunday uh, to bless you. And we say that with an assurance out of God's word, because God's word is indeed the greatest blessing we can experience. Mm -hmm. We honor the man of God in this house to our pastor, to Pastor Rogers. Certainly we're grateful to the Lord for him uh, as we sit together and study, we pray that God would lead us, mm-hmm. guide us with the things that we should share out of his word with you that will give you clarity and a better knowledge and understanding of the things that he's speaking to us, those of us who are seeking truth. Uh, we honor our deacons uh, that are present with us, to uh, our elect lady, to Sister Loretta, to my wife, Sister Crystal, and to the women of God in the house of God. Uh, we, uh, we just thank God. And we hope that you will, as always, grab your Bible, mm-hmm. grab pencil, paper, if there's something you want to jot down, and research for yourself or questions uh, that you would have. You can pose your question, and we will do all we can to satisfy you 
out of God's word. Not of our own knowledge mm -hmm. or not what we think, but we will share what God says about it. And with that, we will turn it over to our pastor that he will uh, bring us into our sun greet you and bring mm -hmm. us into our Sunday school lesson. And we say praise the Lord and good morning to you and thank God again for allowing us to come before you and we thank you for allowing us to come into your homes to bring forth this word that God has given unto us. As always, we ask your prayers that you pray for us, that we allow God to lead us and direct us in what we do and say, as our teacher said, not of our own thoughts, not of what we uh, want to say, but what God direct us to say. And as we go into our lesson, we have a different uh, uh, series uh, that we're starting this, uh, uh, this month, and it's called the portraits, of, the portraits of Salvation. And one of the things is a portrait is a, a picture or a drawing. And a lot of times when it starts out, you can't tell what it is. But as it continues to move and, and, and be fulfilled or completed, you will see the picture. So in other words, we want to do the portrait of, 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 of salvation to you that we can draw or paint this picture that you can see what salvation is all about. When we finish, you have a full understanding of it. Also, we had a, a time, a, a series in our studies about the threads of the Bible. You know, you, you start with a thread and you start knitting it together. And by the time you finish, you have a quilt. You might not fully understand what it is at the beginning, but when it's completed, you will know what it is. So pray for us as we go through the portrait of salvation that as we start drawing, as we start sketching and penciling, if you pray with us that we will bring into completion and simplicity what the portrait is all about, what salvation is all about, and who salvation is for, that none is left out. It is for everybody, regardless of who you are, where you are, where you've been, where you come from, what you're doing. Salvation is for everybody. So for April 2nd, 2023, at series Portraits of Salvation, with our lesson topic today, Once Lost, Now Found. Focus verse is coming from Luke 19, verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Lesson text is coming from Luke 15, verses 1 through 10, and chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Truth about God. The, Messiah, the Messiah's mission is to seek and to save the lost. Truth for my life. I will celebrate that Jesus sought, excuse me, I will celebrate that Jesus sought me and saved me. Now, icebreaker. What is the longest you have ever been lost? Our lesson outline, Jesus loves the sinner. How does it make you feel to know that Jesus died for you while you were lost? He will seek, he will seek for the, those who are lost. He will rejoice over finding a sinner. I will rejoice when the lost are found. Jesus found Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was lost. Jesus sought for and changed Zacchaeus. I will celebrate that Jesus sought for me and changed me. Father, it is in your precious and wonderful name, Lord Jesus Christ. We come to say thank you for another privilege. Thank you for another opportunity. You have blessed us and have allowed us to come to sit, Lord, and to, oh God, discuss and explain your word. Bless us this day, Lord, as we go forth. Lead and direct us, oh God, in what to say as we bring forth this lesson. We thank you for realizing, oh God, it is for us that you came that you gave your life, that we may receive salvation because you loved us just that much. And that it didn't matter what we did, it didn't matter where we come from, what our background was, oh God. You overlooked all of that to bring salvation into our homes. And you were looking for us, oh God, when we didn't even know to look for you. So bless us this day, yes, God, that we yes. make it plain and clear that there are some, oh God, that feel that they are not even worth saving. They feel like they are not even worthy of you. But God, let us counsel that out today. And let them know, God, that no matter what we've done, God, you, you love us and you've come to save us. Bless and have your way this day, anoint our ears that we may hear, God, that our hearts and minds may be changed after we hear this lesson. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So we begin uh, this new uh, course of study uh, from uh, the portraits of salvation. Um, but... I just want to reach back a little bit. Uh, the uh, lesson um, that we came out of study, parables of kingdom truths. Mm -hmm. So we have this lesson, which is when we understand it, it is earthly stories with heavenly meanings. And that, that's the way Jesus speaks to us so we, he can bring us into understanding. 
Micah 6 and, and uh, uh, 8 says, He has shown thee, mm -hmm. O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly before thy God. Well, when pastor said you start a, a portrait and you maybe, maybe the painter has in mind what they want to accomplish in the end, but anybody that walks by mm -hmm. it don't grasp mm -hmm. what they're doing at the time. And when Jesus came into the earth, there were so many that didn't understand what he was trying to teach us. That's why he took his time to tell us in a manner of stories that we might understand the way to salvation. Now, uh, from those stories, we now can uh, paint this portrait to help us come to the understanding of what the Lord uh, requires of us for salvation. Uh, when when, when uh, the, the lesson for today is once lost, now found. Well, we, we don't need to go uh, too far into our lesson until we accept the fact that all of us mm -hmm. are lost. <laughs> all of us. We come into this world lost. In Psalms 51, it says we were born in sin. So that means we were lost when we came here. Mm -hmm. So when the question pastor asks, <laughs> what's the longest you've been lost? Well, you were <laughs> lost up until the time right. you came to the knowledge of who Jesus is mm -hmm. and what he did for you and not then where you found, but then you had to receive mm -hmm. what the Lord did coming into salvation where you were no longer lost. You know, th th this is th the challenge is uh, for religious people. That's the challenge. It's for religious people, people who go to church, people who say, well, like the lesson we had, the rich young ruler, that says, all these things I've done. I go to church. I sing on the choir. I'm on the deacon board. I'm a mother in the church. You know, I pay my offering. Mm -hmm. You know, these are religious people. No, that's not what Christ is looking for. He's looking for those who are willing to present themselves to him, that he might be able to use them or that they will allow him to use them to accomplish his work. We, we uh, um, we're in our Bible study, where the question was posed, what are you doing to grow the kingdom? That's what this is all about. First of all, we got to recognize we're lost, come to Christ, and, and this will unfold in our lesson. But if you don't know you're lost, and, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people, because mm -hmm. of their religious status, they don't know they're lost. So, I mean, even when Jesus finds them, like he found uh, uh, the character in our uh, lesson today, even when Jesus finds them, uh, I mean, because there was a, a specific character, but there were others in the company, and they didn't understand Jesus' purpose. <clears throat> well, it says he didn't come to those that are righteous. Right. He came to those who recognize their loss. Because if somebody know, think they know where they are, they're not going to ask you, well, how do I get to where I want to go, even though they're lost? But if they will acknowledge, you know what, I don't know where I am. I know where I need to go. Then we can help them. Amen. And again, one of the things that teacher just brought up again, and what we must always keep in mind is the kingdom values. <laughs> and see, what happens is God's loss and what we consider loss are not the same thing. Because what happened is we feel like we lost when we lost our directions or we don't know where we're going or we just don't know where to turn. That's when we're being lost. But God sees us as being lost, as being separated from mm -hmm. him, not knowing his word, not knowing his commandments, not knowing what is required of us. And see what happens is we look at the outside, we look at how things are going, how we're presenting ourselves and feel like we're not lost. We got everything under control and we know where we're going. God looks at our spirit. And when our spirit is separated from God, 
we are lost and we need a direction to get back to him. And, and, and another thing is, you know, our Bible is our compass, is our roadmap to lead us to salvation, to help us um, to stop being lost and to be found. Teacher Red and Michael said, I have shown you, man, mm. what is required of thee. But if you never pick up the compass, if you never pick up the roadmap to see mm. what is shown us, we will never recognize that we are lost. And so what happens is we have what we need mm -hmm. to lead us you know, out of the woods, but so many times we fail to pick up what we need to use it. Uh, and that's why he said in Proverbs, don't lean into your own understanding. See, you know, with our own minds, our own, un own understanding, we think everything is all right. Well, teacher was saying again, because of our outward, of outward appearance and the things that we do, that's in Matthew, when we stand before God and we tell God all these different things that we have done. And Jesus said to us, but I still don't know you because um, you don't have my spirit. So all of our works does not mean anything because first of all, we are saved by grace and by faith. So what we're doing, we're operating on faith, not by works. But we can't do this thing on our own. We can only do this thing when Christ is within us. So again, the, 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 the question uh, teacher said or the statement, we must recognize that we are lost. Mm -hmm. We are without God. We don't have God in our lives. No matter how good we are, we were born, in, as he said, we were born in this world lost. And the only thing to get us back on track is God's word. And then what we do when we have the word, we have to follow what it says. Not traditions, not doctrine, but follow what God's word says. And the way to lead us away from that is, again, repentance, <laughs> baptism mm. in yes. Jesus' name, yes. receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. That, that is what brings us out. But the thing about it is, until we find that point, until we reach that point, Jesus is seeking for us. He's looking for us. That's why he said, for God so loved the world, he gave his only mm -hmm. son. He can't teach. A lot of people think that the Lord came just for the righteous people. He <laughs> said, no. Teach, I think teacher said it. He said, the whole Lord need a physician. Mm -hmm. Them not the ones I'm looking for. The ones that are separated, the ones that are sick. Those are the ones that I'm looking for. So what we have to do, no matter where we are, what our status in life, no matter what we've done, no matter how long we've been doing, Jesus is looking for us, and he's seeking us. And what he wants us to do is recognize that we are lost so he could bring us back home to him. Amen, amen. Remember, the title says, mm -hmm. once lost, once, yes. now found. But wait a minute. We can change the title for those who don't want to receive Christ is once lost, Still, still lost, lost. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> until right. you're found, you're right. still lost. Mm -hmm. Listen, <clears throat> our text comes from Luke 15. Watch verse 1 and 2. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners okay. for to hear him. Mm -hmm. Okay, again, publicans and sinners. This is all they came. The publicans are those self-righteous. And the sinners, hopefully they recognize that they are sinners and they're separate. Nothing has changed from the beginning when Jesus said, the day that you eat of, oh, when God said, mm -hmm. the day that you eat of the fruit, you will surely die. Well, when you understand, and I'm mean, people still debate that. Well, Adam and Eve didn't die a natural death. That's a fact. But they were separated from God and that's the death that God was talking to them mm -hmm. about. So if you don't, if you're not recovered from your death, then you're still lost. So when we begin to talk about this, you have these publicans and sinners, both are lost, both are lost. But watch, verse two says, and the Pharisees and the scribes murmured saying, this man receiveth sinners, okay, um, and eateth with them and, and uh, under the, uh, uh, law of, 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 of the Hebrews, it was against the law for a righteous man to sit with sinners and to eat with sinners, but the purpose of things have changed. Remember, John the Baptist came preaching that uh, uh, to repent for, you know, the day uh, of uh, kingdom, of heaven, kingdom of heaven is here. Right. Thanks, Pastor. Jesus came fulfilling that uh, mission saying, listen, you've got to be born again. Mm -hmm. 
So now nothing has really changed because the message remains the same. But if, if you understand, and, 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 and I'm going to put uh, uh, myself and pastor in this, all we can do is what God gives us to do. John could go to a point. Right. And that's as far as he could go. Remember, he sent his disciples to Jesus mm -hmm. and said, are you the one? Or should we look for another? Because John had been preaching repentance. And people were flocking to him. But John had already declared, but there comes one after me who is mightier than I, who will truly find you mm -hmm. and give you what you need for salvation. He said he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. That's as far as John could go. Jesus comes and then he lays it out for us, but then he ascends to heaven after his ascension or after his resurrection. He goes to heaven and then he leaves men as the disciples, the apostles, and now those who have received salvation to teach the word of God. That's as far as we can go. Let me tell you. You may, and I, I know you probably don't, but you may say, well, these guys sound like they are pretty intelligent. No, we're not. No, we're not. We're not. Because all I can do is speak. Mm -hmm. Until you get the Holy Ghost, which is your teacher, there are things we'll say and you'll never come to understand mm -hmm. them. But you have to step out on faith, repent of your sins, receive Christ by baptism, indwelling of the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongue as that spirit of God begins to work in you. And then that spirit will open your understanding. Otherwise, you're going to be like these publicans and sinners who hear the word over and over and over again. But this says, and, and, and he spake this parable unto them. He was still trying to reach them. But then if you run down to verse 10 of, of uh, uh, well, it's actually 19 and 10. And it says um, that uh, for the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. Well, when, when that scripture comes across, it sounds like maybe everybody isn't lost. <laughs> and that's where you will get caught up because you have to first accept the fact that we're all lost. Right. And then again, but as the teacher was saying that in Luke 15, it says, and they draw near. That's why... The Bible tells us faith cometh by hearing, mm -hmm. hearing by the word of God. So, in other words, we have to continually hear what God's word is saying to wake something up in us to recognize we are not where we're supposed to be. And if we allow God's word to direct us, then we can see what God has yes. in store for us. Then, but see, one of the things is, what happens is, sometimes some of us think that we are better than others, mm. and then, but we are not. And then, in, because what Jesus does, he see the whole picture. Yes. We look at our works and our status in life and feel like we are better than someone else. But this is what Jesus said. He said, you look at the outside, mm -hmm. but I look at the inside. I don't care how pretty you look on the outside, the inside it is what's count. So, you know, when Jesus, because he said, the son of man come to save those that which was lost. In other words, those that are righteous, those that are right, those that are living according to God's word, listen, not the ones that think they are mm -hmm, living according mm -hmm. to God. Those that are living according to God's word. Those are the ones that he have fenced in, if you allow me to say it, because he said he put them in a safe place and he mm -hmm, leave because he's mm -hmm. lost one and he goes looking for those. He's not worrying about those right now because he knows he has those in a safe place and nothing or no one can get to them. So those ones that are lost, that don't know uh, the danger that they're in, those are the ones that he comes mm -hmm. seeking and saving. Now the, now, the ones that think they have it right, like these Pharisees, those are the ones that are mumbling and grumbling about <laughs> this man. Do he know who, who, they, who he's messing with? See, we forget who we, we were. were yes. We forget what we were doing because guess what? We were the sinners. We were the publicans. And it's the love of God that brought us into where we are now. Don't forget where we have come from because at any time we can slip back and go back there. Or, or, or furthermore, uh, uh, don't slip back like the prodigal son. Remember, he stayed home. Yes. He didn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And guess what? His condition was just as bad as the boy that left because of the attitude that he had towards his brother that was gone. These religious leaders, because of their attitude, they might not have that 
public consent or title, mm -hmm. but guess what? <laughs> they are included in them because of the attitude and the disposition that they have. So don't let position fool us that we that we are all right. Let um, think us that we are above uh, 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 them mm -hmm. because guess what? If we check ourselves by the word of God, we'll see that we're all in the same boat together. So the only way to remedy this thing is to look, you know what? I, I, I was a sinner, saved by grace, God brought me out because of his love. And what I must do now, watch, because of where I was or because of who I was and, and where God has brought me from, who would be more qualified to go back and to help some of the ones that were in my circle help bring them out to find salvation and freedom than the one that was there? Because see, if we spend so much time with the righteous folk or with our, our, our church brothers, guess what? That means our brothers and sisters are still lost out there and none of us are going to check on them or, or to see about them or to try to bring them in. No, our job is that when God has blessed us and saved us and brought us out of, of, of from being lost, we got some good news. Hmm. And we want to go back and tell our other brothers and sisters how they can be found, how can they can be, they can come out of uh, their destitution, how they can be found too and live a better life than what they're living now. And the only way we can do that, we have to go back among them and do the same thing that, you know, uh, among them who were doing what we were doing. First Timothy 1 and 15 says, it's, you know, Jesus came into the world to save mm -hmm. the sinner. He didn't come looking for the saved. He didn't come looking for the righteous. He came looking for the lost. And Paul said, you know what? I was the chief one. I did a lot of things in my ignorance. Listen to what Paul says. Paul was a righteous man according to standards, according to law. But he said, if you were to check me against the law, hmm. I was blameless. Oh. He said, well, when Jesus came and shone the light on me, he showed me all of my perfections. He said, all that stuff I thought I knew, he said, I count that lost now that I may know Christ. He said, but the stuff I did, I did in my ignorance. But when Jesus came, he showed me my error. I was lost too. Even though I was a religious leader, I was a Pharisee, a Hebrew, even I was a religious leader, all this doing, but I was lost. But thanks be to God because Jesus came to save the lost, which I was chief. He's he showing his love on me and brought me out of my captivity. Now what I'm doing now is working to try to free others. So the uh, lesson goes on in verse 4 of that 15th uh, chapter. It says, what man of you? Mm -hmm. Now Jesus begins to speak in the way that he challenges us to understand the value mm -hmm. of something lost. Having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, doth uh, not leave ninety and nine in the wilderness to go after that which is lost until he finds it. Now this is, he's speaking of himself. He comes into the world and those of us who are lost, uh, that is what uh, compels him to do what he has done. You know, God stepping out of the magnificent glory of heaven to come into a world full of sin infested people and not only that but to take their sins upon himself to free them of sin this is him in in, in going into the wilderness to find us one at a time mm -hmm. and he found him and he says listen what does he do he picks him up lays him on his shoulders and brings him back into the fold that's how much uh, god loves us and that's when it says in john three sixteen. For God so loved the world. Not, this is not about the lost uh, uh, sheep. And it goes on in th these, these parables. He tells us about a woman who lost a coin. Mm -hmm. uh, we, 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 we had the lesson where the prodigal son, where he was lost. But when, when we find those that are lost or when those that are lost find or acknowledge that they're lost and allow Christ to come into their lives, it's twofold they will rejoice because they were found. We should rejoice because they're found. You know, when, when, when the prodigal son returned home, his father said, uh, he, I mean, he was ready to rejoice. I mean, you know, I, I want the fattest. I want the best that I have. You know, put a ring on his finger, put a robe on him. I, I want, you know, that's how God, uh, 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 Jesus looks at us when we come to him uh, mm -hmm. after we've been lost. he That's how much he thinks of us. You know, everybody else might be looking, as Pastor said earlier, that we don't belong here, just like these publicans and sinners. 
thinking that the ones that Jesus was reaching out to didn't have a right. right. Mm -hmm. Listen, these weren't Abraham's children. But, but God loves us all. It says he died for the whole world. And he will sweep the whole house until he finds us. But even if he finds us and we don't, you know, if for us, if we lost something and we find it again and we don't know the value of it, we don't take care of it. Right. So when he finds us, he knows the value of what he's found. So that's why he gives us his spirit to help keep us. You know, this lesson uh, uh, is, is about being found from being lost. And, uh, you know, it says Jesus come. He says he will seek for those who are lost. That's his purpose. But, you know, mm. when, when you read it that way, it sounds like there's certain people. No, mm -mm. the mm. whole world like, is lost. Like person. <laughs> it's, but, but it's only one person when it's me. Right, right. <laughs> it's only one person <laughs> when it's pastor. Right. There's only one person, one is you. Mm -hmm. But it's all of us. And we have to come to this knowledge. And that's why he came. That's why he taught us in a way to bring us to understand. Remember, pastors, when he, when he started, he said, you know, we have an easel up. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and, and we just got a few scribbles on uh -huh. it right now. So we don't understand. But see, the thing is, Jesus knew the end and the beginning at the very same time. We only see parts of this portrait coming together. Mm -hmm. But he he knows exactly what the end is. So I mean, he, it's not like he's trying to think through this thing to uh, uh, you know to get to the uh, portrait that he wants. No, that in his mind the portrait's finished. Right. You, you know, this is key. That portrait is about you and me. So that one scribble may be you. I may never be a part of that portrait if I don't accept what right. Jesus is saying. Mm -hmm. So I mean, listen, you say, well, I don't see me. No, you won't see you <laughs> until you are painted into the portrait, mm -hmm. right? So I mean, that's what we have to understand. Lord, when, when the rich young ruler came to Jesus and said, what must I do? Jesus said, well, this is how you right. get into the right. portrait. <laughs> And he says, well, I did all of that. He says, yeah, but something's lost. Mm -hmm. He says, yeah, lack it out. You, something's lost. And he says, when you do that, you can get painted in the picture. Well, listen, so many of us that are self-righteous, when we hear the word of God, when you hear what God says, mm -hmm. when you hear what Michael was echoing that God has shown us what is required of us, and then you walk away because you say, well, them guys, they're always talking about they're always talking about repenting of sin and, 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 and being baptized in Jesus' name and receiving. They ain't got nothing else to preach. No, sir. That's how you get in the pulpit. I do not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what John the Baptist preached up mm -hmm. until repentance. Jesus came and uh, clarified for us that it goes beyond repentance. Mm -hmm. And when the disciples began to preach after the day of Pentecost, that's all they preached. Mm -hmm. So, no, I don't have anything else to preach to you. But I guarantee you this, if you're found and you come into Christ, you'll end up doing the same thing we do, preaching the same thing, because that's all God. God's coming to find the lost. Those of us that are lost, you got to recognize you're outside of the will of God. You know, as as teacher was talking and you read about the different stories of Jesus through, throughout the, uh, the synoptic gospels and you see, find him going to different places. And you know what? And he said, and he went to preach to God. No, he was seeking. Mm -hmm. He was looking for the lost. And teacher said it again. And those that would hear him, those that would recognize what their condition was, they came to him. So he would go from city to city, town to town, seeking those that would hear him, that he could bring them from that lost state to a found state. And as he was going to Jericho, mm -hmm. uh, he was walking through the streets. And, and I believe because of the wonderful things that he had done, some of us become inquisitive or become nosy. We want, we want to uh, know who he is. Uh, there's, there's a song that we sing in church. I went to a meeting one night. My heart wasn't right, and, uh, and but something got a hold of me. <laughs> it wasn't my intention for something to get a hold of me. My, my intention was being nosy to see what was going on, but because of what was going on, it touched my heart. 
And, and, and what happened, Zacchaeus heard about Jesus, but Zacchaeus was a man of short stature, so he couldn't see above the crowd. So, so because of his interest, he ran and climbed the sycamore tree so he could see and get mm -hmm. a good look at Jesus. And, and when he did, Jesus said, Zacchaeus, come down because I, the Son of Man has come to your house. In other words, I found you, Zacchaeus, and if you would hear what I have to say, I'm going to change your status. I'm going to change your state of life. That um, it's going to be different. And then even when you are changed, you're going to uh, other people are going to know it and they're going to see it because of how you can you're going to conduct yourself. And and what that did, that 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 brought me to mind. Um, you know that the Lord was seeking me. Uh, teacher said it again. He seek he's seeking everybody. But we have to make it personal. I mean, you, can, you mean God is seeking me? Yes, he is seeking you as an individual also, if you would hear what he has to say. Well, I was like that. Uh, I wasn't like the rich young ruler because I wasn't doing the law. I wasn't doing none of it. But I thought I was okay because I didn't know I was lost according to God's standards. But then God had to show me where I was in order for me to be found. And, and, and what it was, it's like I was going to church and stuff before, but... I never heard the word like I heard it when I got here. Because see, because this is what it is. You think, we think, that the word of God is supposed to always be soothing. It's supposed to always be so pleasing that, oh, it was nice today. And I walk out, oh, the preacher says some nice things, this, that, and the other thing. And we're going about our business. No, the word of God comes to condemn, to, to chastise, to bring out, to make you recognize where you are and who you are. And when someone can peep your trump card and start talking about who you are and everything, it's going to make you mad. It's going to make you upset. But what Jesus is doing is showing you, I'm trying to show you where you are. I'm trying to show you your status in life. And I'm trying to bring you out of where you are mm -hmm. that you, from a lost state to a saved state. Well, what happens is you get upset because that like you're saying about us right now. All we're saying is repentance, baptism mm -hmm. in Jesus' name, and receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. Man, that, that, that's all you yeah, get. That, that is the gospel. That is the message. So what happens, you may get upset. But if you go any place where the word of God, the true word of God is being preached about salvation, you're going to hear the same thing again because the message is not going to change. So what happens is even if you don't receive it right then, even if you walk away mad, I want you to know something. Mm -hmm. God is not giving up on you. He's still seeking for you. It might seem like he's like, but guess what? Wherever you go, whenever you hear a word, someone speak a word, that is God letting you know, I'm still seeking after you. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that will stop him from seeking mm -hmm. is when we die. Because he says in Romans 8, there is nothing that will separate me from you, no matter what you're going through. Even in this, you might not can come to God if you die unsaved, but guess what? Even in your unsaved state after death, he still loves you. Mm -hmm. the, the place that we're in or the condition that we're suffering is not because of him. Mm -hmm. It's because we refuse to accept our salvation. We refuse to accept our freedom because of the things that he offered us. Remember, kingdom values, kingdom principles. It's not going to be what we understand or what we all know, what we can explain. It's going to be according to God's word is the way God is going to bring us and draw us. So you know what? That's why it's so important to be born again so we can learn to understand as he give us these parables, we can learn to understand the, the heavenly principles, the heavenly values of these things, and we can walk the way God wants us to walk. But until then, we're in that lost state and it's Jesus is pleading. It is him at, at, at the door knocking. Just knock and open the door so I can come in. Open the door so I can suck. Open the door so I can bring you out of the conditions that you're in. But the first of all we got to do is recognize the condition that we're in and we need to be saved. And Jesus has come to save us. So uh, I just want to touch on a few things that Pastor brought in when he began to talk about Zacchaeus. And that's what this lesson leads us to. But we have to recognize that it's not about Zacchaeus. We become mm -hmm. the Zacchaeus of the story when we want to be found. But, but there's such great value in this story because, as Pastor said, Zacchaeus, as the word of God de declares, he was a man of small stature. All right. I, I want you to consider mm. all the things that he has against him mm -hmm. first. He was a small stature. Um, he was rich mm -hmm. and, 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 and he was hated by the masses. Why? Because he was a tax collector. Mm -hmm. He was a deceiver and a crook, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. He got rich making his money 
off of others that they uh, they they had malice in their heart to him because of who he was. Now, so looking at Zacchaeus, mm. uh, he is a man that nobody mm -hmm. wants to have any dealings with. But Zacchaeus recognized that where he is, there's got to be something better. And because of his small stature and because the surrounding uh, company didn't appreciate him, he ran ahead of the crowd. Mm -hmm. And the word of God says he climbed up in a tree just so he could see Jesus. Now, we have to have a desire to know who Jesus is. We got to have this mm -hmm. desire. Now, we may not know how to come to him, but we have to have the desire in our hearts as blind Bartimaeus did. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus was coming, he couldn't see him. Right. He was a blind man, but he began to cry out, the son of David. And they, the, the, you know, the, those same <laughs> Pharisees and, and sinners and, and publicans started telling uh, Bartimaeus, man, be quiet. No, but if it's in your heart, you need to cry out to the Lord because I'm not stopping until he hears. See, that's our way of seeking God. Right. Now, God is also looking for us. Now, all the people there, why did Jesus walk up to the sycamore tree and tell Zacchaeus to come down? What about all the, so, so God's not seeking all the other people yes, who, no, but let me, pastor said this. How better are we to help others if what pastor said about, what Jesus said about Zacchaeus, when they could see the change in Zacchaeus' mm -hmm. life? would draw others to cry. So listen, you go after the baddest. There you go. <laughs> you go after yes. the baddest thing out there. And then we, we come to this, well, if God would save That's Zacchaeus, right. That's right. I know I can be saved, but I got to seek mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. I got to seek the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if I don't seek him, then I'm not going to find him. In, 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 in John 3 and 17, it says, For God sent not his son into the world to condemn this world. That wasn't his purpose. It says, But through him, the world might be saved. His mission for coming is to save, and what? He died for the whole world. His mission is to save all that will come to him. The word of God again tells us, It's not the will of God that any should be lost. We remain lost because it's what we want. And you say, well, I don't want to be lost. Yes, because today you have a choice. Uh, from, from, I think it was either our, our last week's study or the week before, in the book of Hebrews, it says today, mm -hmm. today, if you hear my word, pastor always says this, when the word of God begins to draw you, there is this level uh, of, of, of uncomfort, yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because God is speaking to your heart and you become uncomfortable and that uncomfort will take you to anger. Yeah. Well, you, you, you will become a person who uh, 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 no longer, you know, I don't even want to be a part of that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because it, it, you, you start feeling this personal conviction like somebody is coming after you. You know, why they talk about, listen, we're only talking about where you are. We're not talking about you. Right. We're not talking about, because listen, I don't even know you. Right. We're talking about where you are, and we're really not talking about where you are. The word of God <laughs> is talking right. about where you are. We're just speaking what God says. So that begins to allow you to know that you're lost. You're lost. And, and listen. Uh, one, one, one of the worst things uh, this world has today is in our technology uh, that is called a GPS. Hmm. You know, <laughs> that, that, that's that global positioning system. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and, and, and the second worst thing is that man's uh, 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 pride that will not allow him to say, I'm lost. So instead of using the Bible mm -hmm. positioning system, we use our global system or we will refuse to even acknowledge that we're lost. Uh, uh, and, and listen here, this is what men do. 
I've done it myself. My wife said, uh, you know where we are? I said, uh, I think so. She said, you're lost. <laughs> Listen, and this is what I say. As long as I got gas, I ain't lost. Uh -huh. I ain't lost. No, that's not true. <laughs> I'm lost with gas. <laughs> that's like the uh, ten virgins. Mm. There were five wives that uh, had gas and knew where they were going. There were five uh, foolish you know, they had gas when it started, and they said, as long as I got gas, I ain't lost. But then they ran out of gas, and they were still lost. What were they going to do then? Jesus is reaching out to us, listen, over these, uh, uh, these uh, posts. You know, we have a, an opportunity to share with you, and listen, we're not, and, and, and I, if Jesus didn't come to condemn you, no, I certainly can't. Right. You understand? I'm not trying to condemn anybody. I mean, you can rest where you are. That's, that's your choice. God has given us that right to choose for ourselves. But all we're supposed to do is to share these parables so we can get to the same portrait because the word of God says we ought to all do what? Speak the same, the same thing. You know, again, uh, 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 as teacher was saying about Zacchaeus, the condition that he was in, sometimes we allow our conditions to stop us from coming to God. We feel like we've done so much, we've done so wrong and for so long that God don't want to hear me. That's a lie from the devil. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter because that's why he come to seek us who was lost that he may save us. Then, But once he came down to Zacchaeus' house and he sat down and, and Zacchaeus recognized and realized his condition. He realized uh, the state that was in. He, he said to Jesus in that verse, he said, um, unto the Lord, mm -hmm. behold, Lord, the half of my goods mm -hmm. I give to the poor. Right. If I have taken anything from yeah. any man by false accusation, I restore him full forth. And, you know, and that's what Jesus said to him, uh, this thing, Jack, is salvation has come to your house. Other words, I recognize God. I repented of the things that I've done wrong, Lord. And if I did any man, Lord, I, I, I want to be, you know, I want to get things right. And because of his repentance, uh, the Lord let him know, God, that salvation has come to your house. And he said, I've come to seek those that are lost. But sometimes our condition, uh, 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 we got a lot of money, a lot of clout, a lot of status. We feel like we are all right. We feel like we, we don't need this. But it's that inner man that needs the salvation. And then it says, heaven rejoices mm -hmm. over one, mm -hmm. one repentant sinner. If, you know, even the angels in heaven rejoice when one turns away from their old ways and come to God. And this is what the Lord is, is seeking for. So, in other words, teacher was saying, uh, you know, about how you get, we get mad. We can't see you. Mm -hmm. We don't know your conditions. We don't know what you're going through, but God knows. And what God does, he just uses us as conduits. He uses us as mouthpieces just to, to go over the airways to, 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 to bring forth the word that I'm seeking to, you know, I'm seeking you. In other words, and somebody may say, well, um, I didn't go to church. I, I, I didn't. It doesn't matter. We're seeking you through Facebook right now. Mm -hmm, God's mm -hmm. word is going through Facebook just to seek you out where you are right now. And the thing about it is, um, nobody know who you are. But the thing about it is, what you can do right where you are, you can tell God I'm a sinner. You can tell God you're sorry, and you can ask God to receive you into your His heart. You can into your heart. You can ask God, Lord, I repent of my sins right now. And guess what? There will be a, a work will start in you right now. And I'll tell you right now, at New Hope, we got water. You know, and just because you come here and just because you get baptized and everything, you don't have to become a member here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We just want you to come into the kingdom. Yes. Not this house. Yes. But you can, we would love to have you stay. Mm -hmm. but, but this is the doorway. This is the gateway that you can come here and we can put you on the right path. What we can do is we can still see you in to the portrait, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> that you have been found. And the thing about it is, and this is what he says. We don't want you to get self-righteous. We don't want you to think you're above anybody. We want you to go back and let others see right. what God has done for you that you can bring them also. Because teacher said it again, God looked for the worst of the worst, you know, and, and that way he can say, because I know who you were, I know what you've done. When God has saved you, you can say, if God, who, if God did this, yeah, God is no respect of a person. Yes, if he did it for me, he'll do it for you also. All you got to do is come to him. And, and, and it, I know because some of the things we're trying to understand is from a worldly concept, a worldly understanding. And, and, but what we want you to do is just to get the simplicity of it. Don't, don't, don't try to get it all in right now. Right. What we want you to do is if we can get you to just take the first part, 
to get you to understand that repentance is the first step that we need to take. To, to First of all, to recognize where we are, to recognize, are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Are you getting tired of doing the same thing over and over again? Are you tired of getting the same results out of doing the same thing over again? Jesus is saying, look here, come, look here. I want to show you something different. Mm -hmm. I want to show you something better. I just need you to take that first step. See, don't don't be like um be like Bartimaeus. When the people try to hush you up, <laughs> no, you you need something. Yes. Don't listen to them. Be like Zacchaeus. I can't see from where I am, right. but they don't let me. I'm gonna run ahead of the crowd. So when Jesus passes me, he's gonna see me. Mm -hmm. So this is what we're saying. In other words, get out of that that attitude of he don't love me, that attitude he don't care, or that attitude he don't want to see me. Get out of that attitude and say, look, you know what? He come looking for me. Mm -hmm. And since he's looking for me, I'm gonna put myself in a position. Not that he can't see you in a position that he'll know that you're looking to come out of the condition that you're in. And guess what? And he can tell you salvation has come to your house today. Today. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. We, we read a verse this morning from Hebrews 7 and 25. It says, wherefore he is able mm -hmm. also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. That's his purpose purpose to intercede on our behalf but now i want to read uh, jeremiah 50 and 17 because i want you to grasp this jeremiah 50 and 17 says israel israel now first of all when we say israel uh, this is the conversion of jacob and this is god's people these are those people who lived according to the law but they were still missing mm -hmm. something the law was to bring us to Christ, right? Mm -hmm. It was to bring us to Christ. It says Israel is a scattered sheep. Now, remember this lesson talks about the lost sheep. It's talking about Israel, those who could claim that they were God's people, but yet they were without what they needed uh, to not be lost. You know, they could live to what uh, God had given them to that point, but now salvation has come. You'll find all of these uh, nations at uh, the uh, day of Pentecost when those 120 so people comes down out of the upper room, every nation under uh, that realm was there, present. So when God saved those that were lost and they came down, there was questions about what had happened up there. And, you know, first thing is, were they drunk? You know, and that's what they say about us. They crazy. You know, that's what they say. And that's OK. You can call me crazy all you want. I'm crazy for the Lord. Mm. So, OK, he calls his own laws. And that's what he's seeking. And even even in, 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 the, in the gospel, Jesus says, uh, only go to Israel mm -hmm. at this time, because I want to try and use mine mm -hmm. to bring others. But because. Israel refused, not all of them, but some of them refused to come to the Lord. Then uh, uh, when the when, uh, pastor was talking earlier about Saul and, and finding Jesus on the road to Damascus and Jesus saving him, Paul then became uh, the preacher to those that were outside of the commonwealth of God, the Gentiles, mm -hmm. those of us who have been engrafted in. It says, the lions have driven them away. It says, first, the kingdom of, uh, uh, help me with that one. I know what it is. Assyria. Assyria. It just. The way it's spelled. No, no, my mind oh. is one point. <laughs> He's talking about those now that have come to strip Israel mm -hmm. of all of the goodness of God. Now, th these nations or these kings who came to strip uh Israel, we, we don't worry about kings and nations now, uh, not uh, people, but we got to worry about kings and nations of things. Those things that keeps us coming, where are we? Right back to you la lack of the one thing. That's mm -hmm. the, 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 the things that now drive us away from God because we don't want to give up what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, after you got drunk last night, and sit, right? Yeah. And the best part of your feeling was to go home and throw up. 
so you can feel better, right? Get that stuff out. But yet you want to hold on and do it again. So the word says what? It's like a dog going right, going right back to his vomit. That's nasty. That's all it's saying. It's nasty. You, you got over it last night, but I'm going to do it again. That's nasty. Or a pig back to his wallow. Back to his wallow. You know, when, when you, you got a prize pig, you clean him up and you take him to the fair and you want to win a, a ribbon. And for some reason, they didn't put enough straw in the pen and he got mud. He ain't going to stay on the straw. He going to wallow in the mud. And you're going to miss your ribbon because he ain't clean. This is what the Lord is trying to save us from. Last week's lesson, and, 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 and uh, uh, I'll let a Pastor, well, we have a few minutes, but I'll let Pastor come in. Remember last week's lesson when you had the uh, beggar, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Lazarus, and, and uh, the uh, uh, Dives, uh -huh. and the rich man, Lazarus, you understand, and, and their positions in life. Well, you would think, it says here that Zacchaeus is rich. <laughs> mm -hmm. So as the rich man thought, he had everything together. But then when he opened his eyes, mm -hmm. he wasn't where he wanted to be. <laughs> and there are a lot of people who, when the Lord Jesus comes back, will open their eyes and find out that they're not in the place where they want to be. But listen to this to the story last week. When uh, uh, Lazarus asked, you know, he saw, he saw uh, Dives in the bosom of Abraham. Reverse it. Okay, when he saw. The, he saw, when La when Dives saw Lazarus. Dives, mm -hmm. he, Dives was a rich man. Lazarus was the one. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So Dives in the bosom of Abraham, he asked, can you just, you know, I need you to do two things for me. First, let him <laughs> dip his finger mm -hmm. in some water and not, not take care of all of me, just cool my tongue. Mm -hmm. And the second part of his request, and please send somebody, somebody. to preach to my brothers. You understand? Know mm -hmm. Because he found out now that this isn't a place that anybody want to be. I don't want to be here, but it appears I can't get out. Mm. I'm trying to mm. save my brothers from coming here. And that's all we're trying to do, save our brothers only by directions of Jesus Christ to preach now. He told Timothy this, mm -hmm. that it's not going to always be where people want to hear what you got to mm -hmm. say. But he said, uh, Timothy, I need you to preach this thing. Preach it when the days are nice and everything is going well in people's life. You know, that's in season, mm -hmm. you know. And preach it when they're going through the pit, sick in their body, stressed in their mind, financial distress. What else? He said, preach it then too. You know, because some people will uh, receive Christ when everything is well. Others will not receive Christ until they're going through. And some will not receive him at all. For the word of God says, for the children, of the bond are greater than the children of the free. That means a lot of us will die because we will not hear the word of God and go to hell. Hmm. And there will be no more help for you. But if today you hear the word of God, and listen, when he says he can save to the uttermost, I don't care, as well, Pastor said, where you are, right. what you've done, <clears throat> how bad you think you are, if you humble yourself and come to the Lord Jesus Christ, take him on by baptism. Receive salvation because the word of God says in Acts, for there's no other name given under heaven whereby man must be saved. And that's that name Jesus. And it says, and they were saved calling on the name of Jesus. That's what we got to do if we want salvation in our lives if we want to be found and no longer be lost. Listen, today is the day. Two things, you know, 
I know you, 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 you hear us keep talking about loss and being saved and, and, and coming to Christ. I would say there are two reasons why Jesus wants you to be saved. He wants you to be found. One, to keep from going to hell, to experience, to spend eternal damnation mm. or, or separated from him. Number two is that when you are found, you can go yes. back and help yes. others that are lost be found also. Yes. If you look into the book of Romans chapter 11, when a teacher brought, as he was talking about, about Israel and their failure, and, and because what, what it, God did, mm -hmm. he wanted Israel to be the leading nation, yes. to lead people to salvation. Not that he didn't want any, everybody to be saved, but he just wanted a people to right. represent him. So he called Israel, he chose them to represent him, to bring salvation, clarity, and help other nations be uh, found that were lost. What he had to do is get Israel right first. That's why he was telling them, don't, don't go to the Gentiles, or go to the lost sheep of Israel first, get them right because these are my pinnacle people. These are the ones that are going to represent me in, in bringing salvation to the world. Uh, you know, uh, through Jesus Christ after he come. But what Israel did, Israel got to the place where they got boastful and, and, and they wouldn't do the right thing with God because they thought because they were God's people, they could do what they want to do and God was just going to accept them and, and let them get by. Well, after a while, what happened, you know, the stories in the Old Testament, he sent them in the uh, 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 captivity to try to get them to do what they're supposed to do. But Israel kept doing, kept doing, kept doing. So finally, in, in chapter uh, uh, Romans here, Paul is telling us that because of the disbelief, how some of the branches were broken because Israel would not do what God had called them to do. When these branches were broken, God wanted to take the Gentile us that would believe that he had found and engraft them in to be part of that nation. Then our job was to be there now to seek those that were lost. He said, I want you to live a life so close to me that even my brothers that were broken off mm -hmm, will become mm -hmm. jealous and be engrafted back in. So in other words, he wants us to live a life that to let them know, look, we were lost one time too, mm -hmm. but God brought us in. So my message is now because God brought me in when I didn't even deserve to be here. He wants you to come in also. So in other words, he wants us to be saved because there is a mission. Our teacher is telling us uh, uh, in Bible study, look at the fields. They are white, the mm. harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. So in other words, Christ is trying to find those laborers yes. that will go into these ripened, over ripened fields to help bring those crops out that are lost. In other words, now we can't bring them out, but what God wants us to do is to go carry the message. Hmm. What we're doing now, we're delivering a message. We cannot bring you out of what you're in. We can give you the words of how to come out, but God has to draw you out. So our job is to try to give you instructions give you simplicity, give you clarity of how to come out. In other words, to help rec you to recognize where you are, that there needs to be a change. Mm -hmm. Everybody don't know that. So we are praying and want you to pray for us that through the word of God, yes. you will recognize your status in life and that by God's anointing and God's moving on you, you will make a change before it's a day and hour too late. So I want to share these uh, last two scriptures with you and we'll allow Pastor to uh, close us out. In Galatians, uh, the sixth chapter, um, you know, because Israel was the chosen people, mm -hmm. we have to become a part of Israel. Right. So in verse 15, it says, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision, which is reference to the law of the Israelites to be circumcised on the eighth day, men to be circumcised on the eighth day, but then the word of God says, but God is not looking for circumcision of the foreskin. He's looking for circumcision of the heart. So he brought that clear, clarity to that portrait that we might understand. It's not an outward thing. Mm -hmm. It's an inward thing. He said, anything, nor uncircumcised, but a new creature. Now you go to Romans 6, mm -hmm. and it explains to us what that new creature is. He says, being buried with him rising to walk in the newness of life. That brings us into that uh, uh, new creature. Verse 16 says, And as many as walk according to this rule, peace on them and mercy upon the what? It's Israel of God. So we're not talking about a nationality any longer a nation we're talking about a people mm -hmm. a people that belongs to jesus christ and the pastor just explained it how do we get here because god had a 
olive tree that was by nature mm -hmm. a natural tree and us wild trees. <laughs> you know, in our sin and in the disgust because we didn't even have a God on our side. But he loved us because he'd already declared, I died for you too. Mm -hmm. He grafted us in that we might become a part of that natural uh, olive tree. Well, listen, if you take a wild branch and put it in to a natural tree and it grows after a while, it mm -hmm. now becomes a part right. of the tree mm -hmm. and you can't tell the difference. Right. And that's why now he calls all of us, not those born to Abraham, mm -hmm. but all of us who come to him, who are now found and find salvation, he calls us the Israel of God. Amen, amen. So we, there's a job, there's a purpose, and there's a position for us, and that's what God is seeking out there, those that would give their lives to him to become a part of that, is that nation mm. that we can help deliver others. We got family members, brothers, sisters, husbands, and wife that are lost, and God wants to use us to help bring them out of the conditions that Amen. they're in. Father, Amen. it is in your precious and holy name, Lord Jesus Christ, that we come just to say thank you. Thank you, God, for allowing us to be a part of this salvation. Thank you, God, for blessing us and help us to realize that we were lost. And God, you given us an ear to hear your word, oh God, to even, God, recognize our condition, oh God, yes. and position, Lord, yes. to bring us from where we were to where we are now. Now, Father, I thank you for blessing us to be a brush in your hand, that you may just use us, oh God, to draw these lines, oh God, to make these pictures, oh, pictures, oh God, for real just instruments, oh mm. God, being used by you. And Lord, bless us. We might not understand everything, oh God, but bless us, oh God, that we yield ourselves to you, that you may use us, God, to make the curves, make the lines, whatever, oh God, the, the, the position may be, God, that you may use us, oh God. And Lord, bless us, Lord, and be the understanding with a clarity. Yes. Our job is to do what you tell us to do. We can't bring mm. nobody. Mm. We can't change nobody. We can't make people like us, oh God. But Lord, bless us, God, yes. that no matter what mm. comes our way, we still want to be used of you and by you, God, because you are the one that is going to do the drawing, oh Lord. Bless us, God, that we don't get attitudes and get upset because people don't don't come, Lord, for you told us not to be weary in well doing, for in due season we'll reap if we faint not. So, Lord, bless us yes, that we just yes. do what you have called us to do, God, to be your servant, to be an instrument in your hand, that you may use us, God, for your glory. And, Lord God, you will do the rest of the works. So we don't have to take nothing on us. No responsibility. Our responsibility, Lord God, is to do what you tell us to do. Just be obedient, Lord God. And everything else, God, you will bring under your subjection. Everything else you will bring to your will, Lord, if we just be obedient unto you. Father, do it for your glory and for your honor. For it's in Jesus' name we ask you these things. Now unto him that is able That's to keep name. you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy. So the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. For it's in Jesus' name that all God's people say together, Amen. 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 Again, we appreciate you for allowing us into your homes, and we thank God for uh, your support uh, through uh, sharing uh, the Word of God. And again, I invite you uh, to be with us on Sunday morning as we come and share out of the Word of God. But equally, we invite you to come on the first and third uh, Wednesday um, as we come together. Uh, in prayer, noonday prayer from 12 to 12.30. So we'll come and pray together and we'll have a short word of inspiration that midweek fill up that uh, will help us, inspire us to go on through the week. And on the second and fourth Sunday, we invite you to come be with us. This is a platform where you can ask questions, pose, or even share with us your understanding and belief. And, you know, hopefully we're in the same place. Mm. But if not, then we will research God's word so we can get to the same place. And this uh, Wednesday night uh, Bible study is from 630, 730. Uh, we, we won't hold you long, you know, because we can't teach all of God's word in one setting anyhow. And uh, too often, even what we uh, share is too much for us <laughs> at the time. We have to absorb this slowly. But come be with us. We would love to have you, uh, that we might study together. You know, that, that uh, adage first, family that prays together, stay together. Mm -hmm. But the word says, the fervor and effectual prayer of the righteous availeth much. And then we have the adage, 
you teach to keep. Uh, well, you can't keep what you don't know. <laughs> the word of God says, how do I know you love me? When you keep my commandments. And that's what the Holy Ghost is for, to teach us the will of God. Listen, we love you as always. We say peace. And if it is God's will, we will see you on next sun Sunday. And as always, we hope it is. Keep us in prayer as we pray for you. Amen. Amen.